So I didn't know what I was doing. The rehab cost was like probably 30 grand more. I underestimated the ARV like every new investor does, but I made a $60,000 check and that's what I was making at the time at my full-time job. So full circle back to your question, was I panicked? No, I was just like, wait, I work all year to make 60 grand and I just made 60 grand with one house. Like all, all I saw was the potential. Hey guys, this is George Uno with REI Club, and you know what we're here for. We're here for another edition of First and Worst. Now, today I've got a guy who has just seen insane success, okay? And when I say insane success, I mean we go into a room of 100, 200 real estate investors, and everybody goes, oh my gosh, is that Brad Chandler? I, that guy's insane. He's done just thousands of deals, whereas some people are like, I've done 100 deals. He's in the thousands, so that's an order of magnitude. It's insane, the stuff he's accomplished. Uh, but what he's really excited about now is just something way beyond material success, and we're going to get to that. Um, but first, I want to kind of give a quick intro on Brad and just why he's probably the way he is. So in ninth grade, as a little 15-year-old, Brad read Robert Allen's No Money Down book. Now, he didn't jump right into it as, as we would have hoped. Uh, his story took a little bit of a path, a normal path, which was really good for him because he went off to college worked for somebody else, said, I hate this, went back to college, got his MBA, went to work for somebody else, said, I hate this, and then he met an investor just kind of just out of the blue. The guy came over, bought the house next door, and Brad is like, what's your deal? What the heck do you do? And I'll let him tell that part of the story, but anyway, got interested in real estate at 15 years old, 15 years later after you know banging his head against the wall, trying to figure out what he wanted to do in the world, he got into real estate, and man, the rest is history. So Brad, welcome to the show. How are you doing over there today? Oh man, I'm awesome. Every day is awesome in my world now. Thanks for having me. <laughs> yeah, you bet, man. And I love that you qualify it now because the stuff you figured out is uh, how you get there. But man, before we get there, take us back, man. Take us back to when you were in ninth grade and how'd you, how'd you even find out about Robert Allen? How did you get into this? You know, I have no idea because there was no Amazon, obviously. Um, I think I might have gotten the book as a, as a Christmas present. Like, I think my mom or dad just was like, I talked about real estate and they bought me that book and I read it. And I'm like, whoa, the one thing I can remember from that book, really, because I, I haven't picked it up since then, is it was unlimited income. And that, at the time, that's what attracted me because we, we had gone through some hardships where... Um, when my mom and dad got divorced at 10 and my dad left and stopped paying or supporting us, my mom was like, we may have to, we may lose this house and, and go to public housing. And I had been to the public housing with her. Now this isn't the Bronx, New York or, you know, inner DC, but it was to me, it was, that's all I knew. So it was bad people. I knew people got shot there. So I was really scared. So I didn't know that at the time. Actually, I didn't know that until the last couple of years, but I think because I was afraid to lose my house that I picked real estate and I picked a business that I knew I could make a ton of money because it would give me safety and I'd never have to move into public housing. Wow, that's, I couldn't even imagine that, like kind of just as that, as that 15 year old kid feeling so powerless and just being like, hey, here's a, here's a glimmer of hope. So Brad, how did things go from there? I mean, I kind of alluded, you went to college and stuff, but how did your life kind of evolve? Yeah, so um, look, I, like I've had a pretty damn good life, right? Um, I was one of those people who, so I went to, like you said, I went to school, I went to work for someone. I didn't want to work for someone. Like I, um, I wanted to control my own destiny, right? So I, I talked to this investor and he said, yeah, I buy houses at 30% below market, fix them up and resell them. So I was like, that's what I'm gonna do. So I spent eight long months. I, I worked a full-time job. I'd come home at six o'clock. Uh, care for my son, put him to bed at eight, and then I'd start pounding We Buy Houses signs and hand addressing envelopes from eight to 11 almost every day. I did it on weekends, and each month that went by, I got more and more persistent because I saw other people were having success, and I was like, if they can have success, I can have success. So it was, I, I made that decision in November or December of 2002. I bought my first house in July of 2002. All of those efforts, I wound up getting six houses in July and August. In, in October, I quit quit my job and came home and told my wife I quit. And um, she was like, are you crazy? Uh, we have a newborn son. And I was like, everything will be fine. And uh, here we are 4,000 houses later. We're not married, but everything is fine. It's better than fine. It's awesome. <laughs> oh, man. So how did, that, how did your first deal go down? Did you, did you actually fix it and flip it? 
So my first deal was a really interesting one. It was a um, it was a, a realtor found me a VA foreclosure, and he would get paid on the front end and the back end when you flipped it. So I'm pretty sure doing the math, he made more money than I did. It was a really skinny deal, and I didn't know better. And he's like, "This is going to be great. You can make money." I did make a little bit of money. I think I made like ten or thirteen grand. So yeah, and then the second deal, um, I had made an offer back in in March of 2003 for like twenty grand more. Thankfully, she didn't take it. Then I kept in touch with her agent, and five days before foreclosure, I get a phone call, and she says, hey, I thought I'd call you since you're a foreclosure expert. I'm like, okay. <laughs> I promise you, I'm thinking to myself, I'm the foreclosure expert, but I bought the house. I took it subject to, which means I, I took the, ho the house with the mortgage in place. I gave her a couple thousand dollars. She was able to move. She was happy as can be, and yeah, that, that was my second deal. How in the world, I mean, was it from Robert Allen's book? Like, how on your second deal are you just like, yeah, we'll just do a subject two on this foreclosure? So I've been going to RIA meetings all this time, and the investor who bought my neighbor's house that I mentioned, he was the first call that I made. Really nice guy, John Peterson. He's, he helped me a lot. I called him. I'm like, I'm freaking out. He goes, don't worry about it. Put it into a trust. Call this attorney. Do this. Do this. And I'm like, oh, I'm in trouble. And some, somehow I pulled it off, and the lady was like, she was, she was so, so, so happy. So, so happy. Yeah, I mean, I love those, she those stories. Lost, she, would, she, would have lost, she would have lost everything, and she had five kids. One of the kids drowned in the bathtub in the house. It was a terrible story. But she was able to get the money and go to, um, go to a nice new house like 30 miles further outside of center, out of the city center. Wow, man, that's so cool when you can actually do like a real win-win for people. You got to love that. Yeah. Yeah, okay. and I thought I was going to read it, and I, I listened to Ron Legrand's tape, and uh, Ron Legrand said, uh, just put a handyman special ad in the paper, a bunch of people show up. One person showed up, and I sold her the house, and I made, gosh, $35,000 or something like that. It was, um, it was half of what my salary was. And I saw Ron Legrand at the event you and I were at last week in Florida, and I told him, that. I was like, I know I've told you this before. But you really helped me, man. Thank you, thank you, thank you. He's like, where's my check? <laughs> <laughs> oh, man, that's so awesome. Well, I, it makes sense now why everybody like looks up to you so much and how you achieved so much. Uh, your second deal in, you've got a good mentor. You're, you know, you're using strategies that are pretty advanced for a guy who's just getting into it to become the foreclosure expert pretty quickly. And you know, you're, you're listening to guys like Ron Legrand and – I don't know. I mean, was he on the radio or something at that point? There was no podcast or YouTube, right? Someone gave me a tape set of his, I think. I think it was actually tapes I was listening to. <laughs> oh, man. Those have got to be the good old What's, days. Someone's listening to this saying, What's a tape? <laughs> <laughs> we'll post a picture. It's these little black things. Yeah, you got to know. If you knew, you knew. Oh, man. Okay, Brad. So you're, you start cranking out deals right away. I mean, six deals your first month. Uh, how's that going? Like, how are you, how are you growing so quickly? And, and did you like panic at first or, or how did that go? How'd that feel? I, I don't think I panicked. I think I was just getting excited that, oh my gosh, this is tr This can happen after six months of, or eight months after working my hiney off. And then the funny thing about that house, uh, when I signed that contract with that one buyer that showed up, there was trash. I mean, oh my God, there was like, like, uh, like 10 dump trucks load of trash in the front yard and we signed it on this old dresser but I put a we buy houses sign in front of that house and I got a call one night on a Friday night from a truck driver a woman says I want to buy the house and I said it's already sold but another mentor Robert Sheeman taught me this trick always ask everyone do you know someone who wants to buy a sterile house so instead of just hanging up on a Friday night I asked her that question guess what she said my grandmother has a house my mother has a grandmother mother doesn't really matter my mom my mom has a house in Arlington she's trying to sell she lives in North Carolina I go do you know what she wants for it she's like I think 220 and I'm like 220 in Arlington Virginia I'm like okay well I'd be interested she goes well, let me call her she calls her she calls me back she goes I just talked to her I got her down to a 185 would you buy it and I'm like uh yeah so I did rehab that house I didn't know what I was doing the rehab cost was like probably 30 grand more I underestimated the ARV like every new investor does but I made a $60,000 check, and that's what I was making at the time at my full-time job. So full circle back to your question, was I panicked? No, I was just like, wait, I work all year to make 60 grand, and I just made 60 grand with one house? Like, all, all I saw was the potential. Hey, if you're enjoying this episode, please hit the subscribe button and turn on notifications. 
It really helps our channel grow. If you guys don't like this episode, I don't know what's wrong with you. Leave me a comment and tell me what's wrong with you. Okay, so you see the potential. Where do you go from there? Do you start to scale up? Do you start hiring? What did you do? Yeah, yeah, so, so, so we're gonna get a lot more to this, but this is an interesting thing. I didn't know it at the time, but my subconscious mind was driving all of my behavior. So your subconscious mind today drives 95% of your behavior, but most of us don't know what our subconscious mind is saying or doing. It's all in the background. So at the time, all I could think about was money, 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 money. If I can make a bunch of money, that's gonna make me happy and that's gonna make me worthy. So that was my sole focus. So I, 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 did, I, did kept, I started marketing, so now I had some dollars. I always had the vision of doing TV advertisement because my dad marketed his business with TV ads. And I was looking for a partner, and there's a lot of shady people in this business. And I, I met with some partners, and I'm like, no way am I going to partner with that guy. Like, he, he tried to sell me his aunt's house and, like, like negotiate down and split it with him or something. I'm like, no, 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 no. So I met this guy, Judd Allen. Um, he, the house that I bought from the truck driver's mom, I put another We Buy Houses sign in the front yard. Had I not put that sign in those two front yards, my life would be drastically different now because I met this guy and we i had no money i i i literally had no money because i had eighty thousand dollars negative net worth from school so um i i i i don't know what i did with the after paying taxes and stuff i didn't have a lot of money but bottom line and he had 10 grand i guess when you have three kids money goes fast um so he had 10 grand and he's like dude i love your your i love your vision i love your energy i want in and so over the chicken cheese steak at this latino restaurant we formed a business and we started TV advertising and then we were just doing, we were both doing every activity and I woke up one day and I'm like, no, no, no. You focus on construction and, uh, and, and financing. I'll focus on sales and marketing. And 20 years later, we, he works more in the business than I do, but he, um, he still focuses mostly on construction and, and development and financing and I'm still on the sales and marketing side. Okay, smart. I mean, you found a great partner. I'm sure you had to sift through a few people, as you said. And then you figured out the specialization of labor, and you guys took your roles. Where did you guys go from there? How did you grow from just the two of you to you know managing more people? And how did that? How did you grow into that role? I mean, I can remember these. We had a consulting meeting with a consultant from um, the the E Myth book, Michael Gerber, on how to systematize your business and. My partner Judd hated it. He'd be like, I think he had ADD at the time, and he's got golf clubs. He's swinging them around the office. He's walking around like I'm trying to create systems, and we cobbled together some systems. And then we're like, well, we can't do this anymore, so we hired a person, and then we hired another person, and then we just kept expanding. We started spending more marketing dollars, and in in 2005, we crushed it. In the first five months, we made like a million and a half dollars. We thought we were the smartest people in the world. My subconscious mind was really driving me now. I'm like, I'm going to be, I don't know how, how these other people are so dumb. Like, I'm going to be retired by the time, you know, in the next three years for sure, making this much money. So we bought three development deals in the summer of 2005 that one of them took us 11 or 12 years to extricate ourselves from. And they cost us $3 million, those three deals. And I know we'll talk, we'll, I tr oh. we'll talk about one in a, in a bit. But, yeah, so, so then we, we basically worked for free for the next two years or three years or whatever. Oh man, that's painful. But uh, yeah, let's dig into that. So tell us about the those deals. What happened? How did that, how did that go so wrong? So we just literally ego ego the subconscious mind was driving me to say money 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 money. So I'm like, I'm smart. I can do anything. I'm gonna. I figured this out. I made so much money. So we bought a house in Arlington, in a much nicer area than the first house I talked about, and smart us we are going to knock down the house subdivide it and put up two two houses we're going to make like a million and a half dollars well we hired an engineering firm that kind of screwed us because all they had to do was pull a title report and figure out that it was a corner lot and you couldn't subdivide a corner lot so um two after we had gone hard on our deposit and bought the house they're like oh can't subdivide this we lost nine hundred and thirty four thousand dollars on that house here's the interesting thing at the time, our investors didn't require personal guarantees. We could have walked away from that house and said, sorry, guys. We didn't have a lot of money because the, the, one, the 1 1.5 was all paper, right? It wasn't cash in the door. And plus, we had a ton of expenses. So we did what we thought was right, and we're like, we're going to pay this back. 
and they kind of short, they didn't really short sale it. They gave us a break on the interest rate and they gave us two years to pay it off. And we paid it off in like 13 or 14 or 15 months. Until this day, they have been our largest investors. We borrowed in return hundreds of millions of dollars from these two. They're, they're two high net worth brothers. So it was a big lesson. Yeah, big lesson. But, you know, taking that loss up front, you know, keeping your reputation intact. And now you still, you know, they're still your best lenders. That's that's a crazy story for us to, to take away from that. The power of keeping relationships and keeping your word. J even simpler. I teach my kids this all the time. Just do the right thing. J life is so much easier when you just do the right thing. I love it. I love it. OK, so your subconscious mind was driving you to just chase money. At what point in your life did you figure out what how this was affecting you and how did you how did you you know deal with that challenge so it was happenstance honestly i was um a little over two years ago i was on a zoom call with a performance coach trying to get my son help for his anxiety and in the first five or ten minutes of the call she's like you have a tick i had no idea what this lady was talking about i'm like do i have a tick on me like what are you talking about and she said you blink profusely when you talk about your childhood you may have some unresolved childhood trauma that's affecting your son in your life do you want to come out and work with my ex-navy seal husband and myself i said sure i'll do anything to help help my son we flew out for a weekend and over the course of a weekend really over three hours one three hour session my life radically changed radically changed i had been in therapy on and off for three decades i've been to 50 different marriage at least 50 different marriage counseling sessions and in three hours, he was able to help me recognize every problem in my life. Every single problem in your life comes down to one thing. Whether you are overweight and eat too much, you drink too much, you smoke too much weed, you overwork, you're depressed, you're stressed, you're anxious, you're in a shitty marriage, your kids have behavioral problems, everything. I could go on and on for hours. Terrorism all comes down to thinking, flawed thinking, and that flawed thinking is based on childhood programming. Stressful times that we go through as children, we make up stories, and that's what our brain should do. It makes up stories to get us through the stressful times. I'm six years old, something bad happens to me. What does a six-year-old little boy say to himself? I must be bad, this is why it's happening. It helps him survive the event. When you're 47 like I was, and my subconscious mind is saying, you're bad, you're not worthy, go buy a 42-foot boat. You've never owned a boat before, Go buy a 42-foot boat and 60 days later, take it to the Bahamas so you can be worthy. None of that was conscious. That's me. That's not good. That's not good. When you, when you have two failed marriages, when you use weed uh, on a nightly basis, when you use alcohol and weed to make you feel better in social situations, all of those things, when you make nine, uh, five business mistakes that cost you $9 million, all of those are from your thinking. But yet most people don't even realize it because it's buried in the subconscious mind, which drives 95% of your behavior. So I came out of there, George, a completely different human being. I got home. It wasn't like a Tony Robbins event where you're like rah, 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 and you get home and you look around and you're like, nothing's changed. Everything changed. And I started looking around at everyone who was suffering. And they're everywhere. Whether you're at a mobile home park or the country club or the mall or a, a high-end marina, right? They're everywhere. There's alcoholism, there's drug addiction, there's many marriages. I mean, how many marriages do you know that are really deeply connected? It's not about the actual marriage. It's the relationship each person has with themselves. So I started looking around and I'm like, guys, like I, I just went through this. Like I changed my life. Like I got, I got to help people. So I just started telling everyone about it. And people are like, dude, you're really good at this. Like I've, I've been to therapy for all these years. And so I'm like, I, I, I got to do this. Like, this is why God put me here. So for the last two years, I've spent thousands of hours studying under some of the best people. I've become certified in rapid transformational therapy, certified in hypnosis. And I help people find true freedom because you guys can teach them how to get really wealthy and financially successful, but you can have all the money in the world and be miserable and be overweight and have a shitty marriage and have kids with behavioral problems if you don't change your thinking. And that's what I do. I help people change their thinking. In, in, in quick time, too, in three to five hours is when the major transformations happen. So, Brad, I love what you said about the subconscious mind driving us because we think that it's our, our, you know, our conscious mind. I want to do this and, and achieve goals and these things. But really, it could just be something deep down inside of us that we haven't even maybe looked at or even think about. Um, 
how do you how do you find that most of your your clients um, how do you find them like what what is the big breakthrough that most of them them find it comes down to so the third session of the five week program is a two hour hypnosis session and hypnosis isn't like the stage hypnosis where you're chasing around a, an animal or you're out cold. Um, it's just a deeply relaxed state. It's like a meditative state that allows your brain to get into the subconscious and clear out all the noise. What they find is there's events in their childhood between the age of like birth and 10 years old where something happened that was stressful, where their needs weren't met, where they felt like they weren't in control, where they had a major trauma or a small trauma. And they told himself that story. And that story has been affecting them in a patterned way over and over again for the rest of, for, 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 for their lives, for their entire lives. Like one bad relationship to the next, one, you know, stumble to the next. Why is my life so bad? Why am I mad all the time? Why am I depressed all the time? Why, why am I having panic attacks? Everything traces back to the childhood programming. So the big ahas are like, oh my God, when that happened, I thought this, and I'm still thinking that in my brain. But is that true? Was there anything ever wrong with you? No, you are enough, you always were enough, and you will always be enough. And when you can believe the truth, because you cannot suffer if you live in the truth, when you can believe that truth that you're enough, you see the world in a completely different way. Like, the world's coming apart at the seams in a lot of ways. <clears throat> I stopped watching the news. I don't know what's going on because for the most part, I can't affect it. But what I can affect is changing one life at a time. So I live in my happy bubble every day. And people probably are like, yeah, you're full of like when I started, I said every day is good. No, every day is good because nothing bad happens to me. If I go, I'm going to go to the Marine in a bit to, to fill up the boat. I didn't realize it was out of gas. And that's why my generator hasn't been working because the generator is the first thing to go. If I go in my car is, is flat tire and I can't go to the marina, am I gonna get pissed? I'm gonna be like, all right, happened for a reason. I believe God or the universe, whatever you believe in, has all of this stuff pretty much played out for you. My car tire's flat, I can't go on a date, I can't do this. All right, well, what? how do I know that if my car tire wasn't flat and I went out and a tractor trailer hit me at the intersection and killed me? So did anything really bad happen to us? My, my second wife up and literally woke up one morning in COVID and said, I'm done. Seven months, seven weeks, seven days later, pulled the moving truck up, took half the furniture, she was gone. I was devastated. Looking back, it was one of the better things that happened to me in my life. So does anything really bad happen to us? I'd say no, because it's happening for you and you can learn something from it. Gosh, can so you, much can, there. Can you tell how the energy shifted when we went from real estate to this? Yeah, uh, you just have lit up, man. And, and honestly, it, it's just like overwhelming. I'm like, I, I want to talk about this. I want to touch on this. But man, there's just so much there. Uh, I love that you, you know, you, you dive back into the childhood stuff. Uh, that does really like a, set our whole foundation for our whole life. And, you know, we kind of just shut that door and we're, like, we're grown ups now. You know, we need to think about that. Nothing important happened, but probably that's not the case for most of us. Nine out of 10, 9.5 out of 10 of my clients, when I ask them on the intake form, did you have a happy childhood, say yes. And I know that they wouldn't be talking to me if they did. So at 15 minutes in the conversation, I ask them some simple questions and I'm like, no, you, you, your needs were not met. Like in, in any way, shape or form, your needs were not met. And so, yeah, a lot of people just have no awareness around, around it. And it's not their fault. I didn't either. I, I didn't. Like my dad hit me with a belt. Uh, he made fun of me. Was that major trauma? I, I didn't think so, um, but it affected my life terribly for 47 years, or not terribly, it affected my life in a negative way for 47 years. Yeah, I mean, things that we kind of just don't even think of, like, oh, that just happened, it was my childhood, and then, uh, you know, now that I'm raising kids, I'm like, wow, is that really what I wanna do? Is that really the best way? Is that, it's the only way I know, so it's hard to reprogram that, but I mean, even just seeing that well, it's alone. Not. It's not. It's it's not hard if you want change, George. It, right. If you have kids or you're sitting there thinking, well, I have a lot of self-love and I'm happy. I may have a couple of drinks a night and I don't have the greatest relationship with my wife. But if you have kids, you owe it to them. So go. I, I formulated this quiz because I thought if I was on this podcast or listening to this podcast three years ago and someone talked about self-love and childhood stuff, I'd be like, no, I'm fine. So this quiz only takes three minutes, if that. It's 12 questions. You just select one, one answer on each question. And it's bradchandler.com forward slash love. And it's a self-love quiz. 
If you score, there's only three scores you can get, extreme self-love, mild self-love, or lack of self-love. If you score mild self-love or lack of self-love, there is a 0.0% chance that you're not affecting your kids. You can think you're the greatest uh, dad or mom in the world, but if you feel unworthy and you lack self-love, you're gonna be affecting your kids. So you owe it to them, because they didn't, they didn't ask to be brought in this world, you owe it to them. I think the greatest gift we can give our children is to teach them how to break this multi-generational curse, because our parents didn't wake up and say, I'm gonna mess up little Johnny, right? They did those things to us because they didn't know any better, because that's the way they were parented, and their parents were parented, on and on and on. So if you're skeptical and you're like, nah, I got, I got my stuff together, go take that quiz and, and see what you come up with. Shoot, uh, that's a challenge uh, that I'm going to have to accept from you, Brad, because, you know, I feel like I had a great childhood. I grew up in Hawaii. Like, I don't even remember a sad time in my childhood, but uh, who knows? I mean, I got to take that quiz and find out and really see how, how, that's, how my life has developed and how my self-love has developed since then. So, guys, go take that quiz. BradChandler.com forward slash love. Love heals all. <laughs> Well, Brad, is there anything you want to part, you want to give to us, you know, as a kind of a parting, you know, moment of wisdom or something that you want to just pass on to us, something insightful um, that we can take away and and kind of have a better day today and tomorrow? Yeah, I think a couple things. I think you know, we talked about me lighting up when I went from real estate to happiness, and I found my purpose. When you are in a triggered state, when you're in a fight or flight state, which most of us are because of our childhood program that we haven't fixed. We've got the proverbial lion chasing us. Do you really think that, number one, you can be creative in your business and think about problems coming down the road? Do you think you can figure out your life's purpose? No, you're running from your life from this lion, right? So as soon as you do this work and you make this shift, and I said everything you see differently, I believe that that is a easy, much easier pathway to find your purpose in life. So if you're 40, 50, 60, 30, whatever, and you're just like, I don't know what the hell I was put here for, for number one, you were, put, you were put here for a massive mission. And if you want to find it out, you've got to do the work because it's really hard to figure out your purpose when you're running from, running from that lion. So I think that's one thing. I think the other thing is just to reiterate that every single problem in your life comes down to thinking. And that thinking, that flawed thinking is a result of childhood programming. I've developed a proven process in literally three to five hours to change that programming that will change your relationship with your wife, your husband, your kids, your business partner, um, will, will get you healthier. If you're struggling losing weight, like you've put on 60 pounds and, or, or, or lost 60 pounds, then you put it right back on. Why is that? Well, you never figured out why did you put on the 60 pounds in the first place, right? It's all from childhood programming. So. Everything that's happened in your life, it's not your fault, and there's a reason for it. Once you become aware of it, then you can make a change. So that's what we do. We, we, when people are struggling, we ask them to take the self-love quiz, or they raise their hand and say, I, I need it. I can't. I mean, my marriage is about to fail. I drink it too much, whatever. Change is possible if you want it. It can happen quickly. You don't have to go through decades of therapy. And life isn't about suffering. You, just like I can, can choose to never have a bad day the rest of your life. It's all how you see the world. Responsibility is the ability to respond. How do you respond to things? I respond in everything is that nothing is bad. So if nothing is bad, that's how I see the world. I mean, are there bad things happening in the world? Yes, there's bad things happening in the world. Are there bad things happening to me? No, because, well, actually that would kind of be, that would, Ram Das, one of my, one of the, someone I listened to for, for a long time who is, who is now deceased, he says everything in the world happens is perfect. Even like the genocide in Uganda. And I don't know because he's not here, I can't ask him, but I think his point about that is that the universe operates in a perfect way. So these people die, how do we know that their soul isn't going on to a much better life? So anyway, I'll end in that. I know that's a really deep thought. It's not my thought. I, I do believe a lot of the world things are perfect, even though we perceive them as bad. We won't know because I think we're gonna. I think our souls are gonna be here for millions of years. I think we'll find all this out, and I think we're gonna be really, really happy. But I think the more you do the work here, I think the future will be better. But that's that's my thought. Yeah. Thanks, Brad. And guys, we really have to think about not just being successful money wise, but you know getting to that next level of, of success and freedom of, you know, emotional health, emotional intelligence. So guys, go check out Brad. You can go to reiclub.com slash happy, and we'll get you guys some links over to Brad. He's got the, the quiz you should take. I got to take it. I'm going to take it. 
maybe I'll share my results with you guys. Uh, if it's not too doom and gloom, uh, hopefully uh, I'm not too messed up, but we'll see. <laughs> uh, Brad, I want to thank you so much for coming on here, man. I know your time's really, really valuable. Um, and I can just tell that this is your purpose and your mission in life. So thanks, man. One last thing on that link that you just gave out, there's a mm -hmm. uh, opportunity to join a private Facebook group that I uh, started a couple months ago that's really awesome called How to Be Happier for Entrepreneurs. So go there and, uh, and check it out. Thank All right, you, man. George. We'll make sure to have a link for that as well, that Facebook group. Well, guys, this is George Uno with REI Club. Thank you to my guest, Brad Chandler, and thank you guys all for tuning in listening in here. Go out there, get, get, your, uh, get your success, get your financial freedom, but then think about that next level, that emotional freedom, that emotional love and self-love and intelligence. So, guys, take care. We'll catch you guys on the next episode. This is George Uno with REI Club. Hey, thanks so much for listening to my mom's favorite podcast. And by the way, if you want to join us on REI Club to get access to free calculators, forums, directories, and a bunch of other resources that you're going to need to succeed in real estate, head to reiclub.com pod and create your free account today. Thanks so much. I'll see you on there.